I'm Sulaina Singh and I'm from India and I'm working in lab of Professor Charles Michael Drain on the project of synthesis of new porphyroids for photodynamic therapy. Photodynamic therapy is the non-invasive treatment for cancer where a non-toxic dye is used which is accumulated in the cell, gets activated by light and then kills the cancer cell. So porphyrin is the non-toxic dye which we use in the cancer cell since uh, um, this gets activated by the light and the only side effect is that patients cannot go out for at least two to three weeks. The dyes which are used currently, FDA approved dyes which are used currently for PDT studies are photofrin and foscan dyes. The only drawbacks of these dyes are that they have poor selectivity, poor solubility. So that's why there are always improvements going on to make a dye which is very selective towards cancer cell. Our lab designed this porphyrin which has glucose units appended on it. So this these porphyrins are more selective for cancer cells. They maximize drug efficiency and minimize the side effects from this treat treatment. In the, in the lab, when we have a mixture of dyes, we use column chromatography technique to separate these dyes. So in this case, if you see, there are different color dyes. These are adsorbed on the silica nanoparticles Okay, and we run them through the starting from the non-polar solvents and get, then getting towards the more polar solvents. So in this case, the non-polar dye comes first and then the next polar and finally the most polar dye. So as we increase the polarity of the solvent on this column, we get the separation of different dyes. Hi, I'm Diana Sabarro, an assistant professor at New York City College of Technology and I'm currently collaborating with Professor Charles Green on the biological aspect of photodynamic therapy. What you've heard from Ms. Tanina Singh regards the synthesis of porphyrin, and I look at the uptake of these compounds in cancerous cells. We found that some of these porphyrin compounds form nanoparticles of sizes ranging around 50 nanometers in diameter or less. These compounds um, are taken up by cells and we monitor, we monitor this by fluorescent spectroscopy. And this is done in cancer cell line. Following the cancer cell line, if we have a successful compound, then we will look at a mouse model. And if there is success in this mouse model, then we will eventually move on to human trials for the compounds. These are the cells under the light microscope. Right? So you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 cells. So after we put the compounds within the cell and they are taken up by the cells, we want to see if it's bound to the cells. And the only way we can do that is using fluorescent microscopy. So fluorescent microscopy tells us if the compound binds to the cell or not. So the cool thing is that once you excite these compounds with green light, a fluorescent red. So this is unique to porphyrins. Right, so this is basically a cell and it's the red area indicates where the porphyrin has found. So 
So not all compounds that we synthesize are taken up by cancer cells. So for example, this is a compound that doesn't seem to bind very efficiently to the cancer cells. And this is based on the dimness of the fluorescence.